creative source. The Egyptians sang the universe into creation, all comes to sound. And you can see this, how these days of creation and the creation, the sound of creation is manifested in some of the symbology used in sacred geometry. For example, Christianity can be very quickly described with sacred geometric principles. And you realize that the creator of the universe is not some guy with a white beard sitting on a cloud. Everything, because the ancient cultures understood this, they understood the process, they understood the source, and they used the source of sound as a source of energy. It is a religion and creation. No matter how far back you go, no matter how many civilizations you look at, eventually, if you scratch deep enough, that's what you're going to find. And figure out how we fit into this great, crazy picture. Uh, we are exposed to frequencies and energies that we have probably haven't experienced in the last 26,000 years. So no wonder we're going through, you know, turmoil and a lot of people are going crazy. They don't know how to deal with it. And we are exploding with consciousness. Why? Why are we exploding with consciousness? Because this, this galactic light is activating our DNA, junk DNA, 97% of it. So as our junk DNA gets activated, it creates a feedback mechanism and we start to think higher thoughts and our consciousness gets gr grows quicker and quicker. It's a beautiful thing, this people. And it's all connected to these crazy people, you know, 280,000 years ago building stone circles in South Africa. They created us and allowed us to get to this point where we can contemplate our own existence. And we're all born free. And yet, we cannot move around freely. We cannot live where we choose to. We have to follow rules and laws that we didn't agree to when we were born. We have to work to pay taxes and to earn this thing called money. We didn't agree to that either when we were born. Flesh and blood. And yet that's not how we're being treated. There seems to be no happy outcome to the political and economic mess of the planet. Every year, every month, it gets worse. More poverty, more hunger, more homelessness, more misery. The global economic collapse is imminent. The fact that we still have a global economic system is actually miraculous. But it is a clear indication how powerful those individuals are that control the global economy. It's spectacular. What kind of creatures have we become that we deny one third of the global population food because they don't have money? They need money, they need to work, lazy bastards. Do some work, go get a job, become a respectable member of society, get a job. We don't need jobs. It's the last thing we need. Every time I hear politicians say, we're going to create jobs, I sense shivers down my spine. We should be living. It's all encoded in the language that we use. How did it get so bad? This is where we get back. To what we've just been to, the ancient civilizations of the world. This didn't happen last year or a hundred years ago. This happened thousands of years ago. The more, the closer you get to this beautiful blue planet, the more you realize how deeply divided we are as a species. And it's that division, very constructively created division that is being used against ourselves. Holy Trinity questions, if you can call them that. That sounds so simple. We should have all these answers at our fingertips, and yet we can't, you know, define these answers with any kind of confidence. Because every time we think we've reached some sort of answer, energy means free to the world. Not just free that we can suck it out of the, the vacuum and then sell it to the rest of the world. That's no longer free energy. Money is not part of natural evolution. This is a complete misunderstanding of human history. Today there are three main banking families, there are arguably a few more, but the big ones obviously, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Morgans, they control everything. They own all the banks in the world. How can I make the statement? Because they're the guys that bail out the banks when they go under. So they own them. It's simple, right? If you bail somebody out, you're going to own them. 
And you're not going to build something out that you don't own, or at least that you don't control. So the World Bank, the IMF, the BI, the Bank of International Settlement in Basel, Switzerland, most people aren't even aware that there's a thing called the Bank of International Settlement. Then the largest legalized organized crime syndicate. That's what it is. So they're a bunch of criminals. We've got to do something about it to stop it. People against banks. Not one person has ever won a case against the banks. Just think about that. Clearly, this is stacked in favor of the banks. Because most people are indoctrinated into this way of thinking since childhood. Um, this is, our education system has nothing to do with learning. It's, it's really developed and funded by the banking families um, to condition humanity into following orders and respecting authority. They control the contents of all the textbooks and, and uh, transfer of information. Our schools are really just indoctrination camps to brainwash our children to follow orders. What are you going to do when it all collapses? And this is my message to everyone in the world. This is where the true humanity shines and we realize how beautifully we can survive without money. We have to find a new system because the system is broken and it doesn't work. Um, we cannot continue doing what we've been doing for the past 6,000 years. That is insanity and as you know, insanity is defined as doing something over and over again and expecting different results. What have we learned from all of this? Where everyone contributes their natural talents or acquired skills for the greatest benefit of all in the community. It's a simple system. It comes with a lot of questions because we're so poisoned by capitalism, con consumerism. They've turned the people to their slaves. The government and large corporations have stolen the country from its people. It's as simple as that. We've become the slaves and the continent their fathers conquered. That's where we are standing today. All over the world, this is the situation we're in. It's nothing for society. It is the absolute tool of control by those that control the issue and the printing of money. That's why when I say they own the world, they literally, physically own the world and each of one of our asses. What do we need it for? It's causing all the strife in our lives. It's destroying our planet. The mines are raping our mother earth, taking out the precious guts out of our Gaia and distributing it around the world to people that claim they own it. It's sick. It's the natural talents or acquired skills to the greatest benefit of all with certain minor rules that are not rules. It's really just an agreement that this is how we're going to work together. The moment you start working in that kind of community, the abundance is so spectacular that we right now cannot imagine it. It is not possible for us to imagine it until you start immersing yourself in this kind of thinking. And I call these the Ubuntu communities, as I said, without money. There's no crime, no envy, no gluttony, no greed, no hoarding, no hierarchy. And the whole Ubuntu, the Ubuntu movement and the Ubuntu party has no hierarchy. Communities look after themselves. We have no central government. We don't have any central assholes trying to tell you how you should be running your life. No obstacles to any kind of progress.